What's up guys, it's Darcy here from Design to Impress and today we've got a special one. So today we're doing... Today, Junior! <laughs> Off to a good start. Today we're working on a HSV Classic from 2007. I'd ask you, can you guess what car it is? But you've probably read the title at this point. So let's go back to 2007 and check it out. Designed to impress. All right, so I've had a bit of a acetone hair removal procedure. Um, definitely not influenced by the missus at all. <laughs> but, but anyway, so today we're working on a HSV GDO, and this is straight out of 2007, um, and it basically looks like it hasn't aged a day since 2007. Neither have I. I look like I'm still 14, haven't aged a day. but anyway that's that's not 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 the point so uh, today we're doing air suspension all around and we're doing the, the whole work so front and rear obviously with a full custom boot install dual tank setup custom hard lines accurate level plus um, right height control the rest of it so a bit of going all out with um on this one and doing a bit of a custom boot install so without talking too much let's just get straight into it and get started so I made a bit of a start here off camera, um, basically because it was really tedious making the bracket and whatnot, but <clears throat> I've gutted out the whole boot, so it had a battery box here in the corner, and you've obviously got wiring here, and the battery cell have to be relocated down in, into the wheel well cavity where the spare wheel was. So that's getting removed, um, and I've made a start on this, this bracket to hold the tanks and compressors and everything. So we're going dual tanks in a sort of a V-style setup. Um, dual compressors and then the E-Level Plus ECU sort of in the middle there as well. So sort of a big symmetrical type shape. Um, but given that the fuel tanks behind here on the GDOs, it sort of limits the space a little bit, but we still will fit it in. So what I started with was cut out a couple of plates either side here. And then from those plates, drilled through two holes, or made, sorry, a cross beam section to sort of strengthen it and then put in a couple of nut certs each side and then one down in the wheel well down in the front there to sort of brace it. So ends up with sort of a big T-piece. So it's bolted in there, bolted in there. And then from there I can do all the, the brackets and whatnot. So I didn't film any of the making of that section because it was really tedious back and forth, back and forth, you know, tack it, bring it back here, get in position, put the spirit level on it and get it all straight and whatnot. So um, took a bit of time to do that, but now that I've got the main sort of bracket shape there, we'll go back over and we've got to put some more um, bracing and whatnot on it and then start working on the compressor layout next to it and then the, the ECU layout after and then we'll get a coat of black or matte black paint or something um, just to sort of hide it off a bit so that you see what you want to see and not, not see this big bracket that you don't really want to see. So we'll go ahead take that over to the welder and um, yeah, strengthen it up a little bit and then bring it back and get our tanks. Is it okay if I'm the same? I'm catching feelings from all the dealings. Am I astray? What do you say? How are you feeling? Is it the same? I hope you're not planning to waste my time. To my surprise, that was her reply. Now we a vibe. It's been a while and such a ride, it starts a line. I love the fact I didn't let her go. She loves the fact that I just let her know. Now we're together, it's a different mode. We getting crazy in a different road. I love the fact I didn't let her go. She loves the fact that I just let her know. Now we're together, it's a different mode. We getting crazy in a different room. We getting crazy in a different room. She likes the fact that I just let her know. We getting crazy, we getting crazy in a different room. We getting crazy in a different. 
She my do or die, my bona fide. My up and I'm down, she's always beside me. She makes me feel alive, I won't deny. Her love for me is real and kinda suicide. She's not the same, she's such a rare type. She's far from plain, at least in my eyes. She said if I cross her, I'll be in the grave. Oh, you under a type, but yeah, that's still my babe. I love the fact I didn't let her go She looks so fat that I just let her know Now we're together, it's a different mode We getting crazy in a different road I love the fact I didn't let her go She looks so fat that I just let her know Now we're together, it's a different mode We getting crazy in a different road So we've relocated the battery from this corner here where it was mounted down into the wheel well. We've made up a bottom plate just out of some MDF that's been painted. So now we've got a mounting point for valve block or all the rest of the like, you know, relays and electronics and whatnot without actually having to drill a heap of um, holes in the wheel well there. So we've got our four mounting points with um, nut certs and then just bolts through just to keep it nice and solid because um, it's only sheet metal so you don't want to chuck a tech screw in it because it'll just pull straight out as soon as I try and tighten, up, tighten it up for the second time. So battery's all mounted there so now we know where our wiring and that's got to go. Um, so we'll go get the bracket which I've just painted um, so it's now ready to just bring in and we'll get that bolted in just to see what sort of clearance and whatnot we've got to make our false wall and then we'll start getting some wires around. So. Let's go grab the bracket and see if it fits. Alright, so I've done a bit off camera, obviously I've wrapped these and installed these in because I had to pull the bracket back out to um, install, but these are the carpet um, offsets which allow this a centre carpet piece to be able to clear when the tank's going. Um, obviously I've test fitted tanks and all that quite a few times to try and get all this right, but um, basically what we have here is yeah, the carpet inserts, a couple of tags here which allow the the um, carpet in infill panel that is removable to get to the battery and that it allows that just to sit in. Um, and I made a front panel and carpet of that, which you've seen me carpeting these ones. So basically now we're up to, uh, um, what are we up to? Hmm. Yeah, so basically now we're up to getting this installed and probably working out some lines and whatnot and some wiring done to the the front for the ignition and handbrake uh, and then we'll start working on the carpet inside panels and then we're actually up to installing the bags so maybe let's go get some tanks and see how they look let's do it I need NOS I need NOS no my car topped out at 140 miles per hour this morning amateurs don't use nitrous oxide I've seen the way you drive you got a heavy foot I need one of these one of the big ones. But actually, you know, let's make it two. 
Canary, I need to buy the knife. Uh. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how these are uh, turned out. Obviously, the customer wanted to go with their Nostyle theme uh, boot install, so like a street car sort of look. Um, but I didn't want to, I wasn't, wasn't too keen on just having, just, you know, getting NOS stickers and just putting the actual NOS stickers on it because it's not actually NOS. So, um, sort of come up with a bit of a play on words to be the not on springs um, portion of it, which it's not because once we finish with this, it'll be on air suspension or airbag. So, um, that sort of worked out well with the, the play on words there. So, yeah, pretty, pretty happy with the, uh, the setup there. And now we've got to sort of just... Yeah, finished all the carpet pieces and that and get some wiring done and then we can actually move on to installing the bags themselves. It is a bit of a pain to try and work around because all of this carpet stuff has to go in first before we can bolt them in, which means you can't do the lines, which means everything's got to be hooked up underneath, but you can't access it. So it's sort of a, an ongoing, this has to be done before that, but then that needs to be done after that to plug that in. So it's sort of a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a, work around I wouldn't wouldn't use the language I would want to use but <laughs> um, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get it sorted out so um, let's pull this all back out again and uh, run everything through change of plan I'm going to run the wiring instead not pull the guts out of that because I've got to run wiring before I pull that out so that's not gonna work I don't think it's two wiring I was trying to see through your flaws Cause I know that you got so much more to give You made a real mess but I miss you though Cause I can go to sleep when I'm alone again Say you wanna fix our problems How long should I be waiting? Feels like I've had too much of drama but I'm not ready to give in ah, 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 ah. So everything's pulled out for the interior that we need to, for now anyway. Um, so we're gonna run the wiring down to the back from the front, that'll give us our uh, accessory turn on, so ignition, handbrake wire, and then touchpad. And we're at the point where now we're going to try and mount the touchpad at some point. Um, so, touchpad here for the Acura E Level Plus system is just the, the sort of the standard touch, the um, standard touchpad, but it's got the compressor uh, monitor built in, so it flashes and changes colour depending on what your compressors are doing. So. <clears throat> Because this car has a rip shifter, originally this pocket that normally goes under the, the head unit, the actual, the front flap of it had been removed, I think, to make clearance. I'm not sure, it wasn't there in the car anyway. So I've made this black trim panel just to cover it, and then this little bracket, if that focuses, it probably won't. There we go. This little bracket like that. And I'm gonna put a couple of magnets in that, and then the touch pad, because this is just a full metal back touch pad, can just magnet mount to that, which will sit right in front of the um, the gear selector or the rip shifter, the outlaw shifter, whatever shifter it is. Um, and then, yeah, you can just take it off and use it as he needs, or you just use it on that bracket. So let's see if this fits and give it a test fit and put some magnets in it and glue them in and yeah, get it stuck in. So yeah, touch pads are just mounted there. It's just on magnet, so it's not in your way of your hand or anything. If you do want to take it off, you can. Take it off and use it. And it's just got magnet back, clips back on, and yeah, nice and out of the way. Not anywhere out here, no holes drilled. Can be reverted back to standard if you want. There's no holes or anything in any other panels. It's all just through the, um, the mounting holes of, of this bracket, which go through in that custom back plate that I made, so. Everything's sort of out of the way and nothing's really damaged there, but I think that's a pretty good spot. He can move it on the angle if he wants or whichever way he wants to have it facing. But yeah, nice and easy. You can still take it off using your hand, clear it back on. And if he wants, he can disconnect it. It's just in the bundle just there. So 
can be disconnected and fully removed and just use the app. So yeah, nice little spot for it. Now we can uh, get some interior back in shortly so I can actually drive it when I put on the, the hoist rather than sitting on the ground because there's nothing here. <laughs> All right, let's go. So the main of the wiring is done now so I'll do a bit of a quick rundown to show you what's going what and what's going where because there's a fair bit going on in here so we've got compressors which will be mounted on these plates each side so one on this side one on this side tanks obviously go in the middle ECU in the middle uh, and then each side has its own compressor relay so this is the left relay this is the right relay so that gets a signal from the ECU to tell the compressors to turn on once the pressure switch but once the pressure sensor drops um, to yeah, below its threshold, so they turn on, um, then that's the relay that draws the main power from the battery, obviously. Got circuit breakers up here, so that way there's no fuses on the, um, the compressor lines. They're auto reset circuit breakers, they just turn on and off as, um, as they basically as they cool down. Once, if, if they do short out or if they draw too much current, they'll go into a trip mode and then auto reset back to on when it's safe to do so and then if they trip out again they just keep doing that so um, sort of maintenance free essentially and then we've got the two main fuses one for the pack controller which is the module this module down here uh, this is what controls well two things it controls the dump solenoid so this deflate or this is a solenoid so these the, sorry these two uh, lines run to the tank drains go into the solenoid and then rather than manually draining it as you need this dumps it every time that you start the car so right now I've got a uh, voltage sensing trigger control, um, programmed on this so once the voltage goes over 13 volts so in other words the car goes on for the first time that it goes on it will burst this three times just give it quick three, three quick squirts every time that you start the car so that way if you turn the accessory on it doesn't burst but it just um, just runs like normal but then if you start the car and it gets over 13 volts this will trigger three times now this is linked to the exhaust from the valve block as well as obviously the drain teed out and then straight down to the floor there so it just drains out the floor got a grommet on that obviously um, to stop moisture and that getting in but that way anytime the air out or that this auto drains it drains out through that that um that tube there which just goes under the vehicle so that's what that does and then the secondary output of this just so that way the compressors aren't on and the system's not trying to run it's got a slight startup delay so we've got a six second startup delay so once you turn the accessory on it delays six seconds allowing this to purge and then it'll start like normal after that and just run like normal so that's sort of what's going on here so now we've got to try and get from these, this, this is the water trap here. So you've got water trap inputs from each tank. Another one in under here. So these inputs will run up to the hoses underneath. So they're halfway up the tanks on both sides. So same through this gap and up. Um, and then the train, the, the air from the tanks will then go down to that water trap. It'll filter out any water. And then it goes from there down straight down to the valve block. That's this tube here. Straight down to the valve block and then out to our four bags. We've got front left, front right, 
rear left, rear right. And then we've got the holes ready. Don't know whether you can see that down there, but just down, down there. Got the holes for each side, ready to go out for the front bags, rear bags, and then both height sensors each side. So front left, rear left, front right, rear right, and then front the same again for the height sensors. So those three holes we use cable glands like that. So that'll just go in, seal up nice and neat, and um, yeah, stop anything from getting damaged. So now we can join up these drains to our carpet panel uh, and then start routing the lines. Well, what I actually probably do is test fit everything in and then start mocking up all the hard lines because it's sort of hard to get into here. So I won't do the final hookup until maybe we get it on the hoist and then I'll just do this final part once we run all the air lines to the front and everything. So might mock up all this now and get all the hard lines all sorted. Right, so hard lines are all done. Um, but I think this video is getting a bit long now, so I think I'll cut it here. And then in the next video, we'll finalize the cast. We'll get the front and rear bags done, as well as the front and rear height sensors. So height sensors at all four corners. We've got all that ran through underneath the car, uh, tucked up all neat, hopefully. And then pressure test the system and hopefully there's not too many leaks. So thanks for watching this one. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, then hit that subscribe button and notifications if you wanna see videos like this and then keep an eye out for the next video obviously with the final reveal so yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one